Welcome to Cook Food Good, the show where I teach you how to cook food good and do other things good too. This week we are tackling burgers, one of my favorite foods at home to make. Next week we're gonna be tackling how to style your hair like me. The key is you don't shower for four weeks out of pure apathy. Also, you may have noticed that I restyled my entire apartment to look exactly like the mythical kitchen. Actually, that's not true, but one time I did fall asleep where, where we record the podcast. I'm not supposed to do that anymore. We are finally back in the mythical kitchen. Thank you so much to everybody who stuck with us as we shot in my apartment for like two months. Next time I'll reward you with a full tour of just my bathroom. I looked deep in my heart of hearts and I was like, what is the best combination of things to go on a burger? This is the most delicious burger of all time to me. It, it, burgers are very subjective. Anyways, if you're following along at home, find the time codes right there. They, the time codes are there. Find them. Find them. I'm sweaty again. So the first step for a hamburger is you have to figure out what kind of meat you're using. I go for 80-20 ground beef straight from the grocery store. I look for the reddest color. That means it hasn't oxidized very much, so it means it's really fresh. And now we gotta go patty size. <laughs> I'm just gonna hold raw meat in my hand. Maybe I'll just talk to the raw meat. So a lot of people these days seem to be opting for the smash burger, which is like a very thin patty and you make a super hot heat on a griddle and you physically like crush the meat into the griddle to create this beautiful crust. And it's a really fantastic thing if it's done right, but in the home it's actually deceptively hard. I like to go for a nice like six ounce patty. You can just kind of estimate it, go a little bit bigger than a quarter pound, but not like anything monstrous that your mouth wouldn't fit around. So the key to this, you don't want to overwork it because you want to keep the meat like nice and loose. And I like to get it really nice and even. One of the pet peeves that I have with burgers is when they are very thick in the middle and they are very thin on the outside. And so the way to combat that, use your thumbs to kind of press it on the outside while turning it and making it into a perfect disc. And then what you're gonna do is take two fingers and press out the middle because when this hits the heat, it's gonna swell up in the middle. It's gonna turn into like a softball. If you look at the size of the bun, you want that to be about 30% smaller than the size of your patty because when you cook the patty, you're gonna lose lose a lot of that fat and it's gonna shrink up. I also hate when you get like 80% bun on the first bite of a burger. You want your burger patty to fully fit within that bun. Also don't let raw meat touch your bun unless you're into that sort of thing. So I am just gonna slap that down onto some tin foil. We're gonna let that rest and then we're gonna teach you how to make some condiments and some other things that we're gonna throw on top of this burger. One of my favorite things to do is to take normal store-bought mayonnaise. You could try making it at home, but they make the best foods. One of my favorite things to add to it, especially with a nice big beefy burger, is roasted garlic. Take your entire bulb of garlic and you're just gonna slice it right down the middle to expose its beautiful garlic meats. This center one is actually the soul of the garlic. You can hear him scream. Take a little bit of oil and just pour that right over the, <laughs> the face and soul of the garlic and give it a little sprinkle of salt. Wrap this up and then you throw this in the oven at 350 degrees for about 45 minutes. The garlic's gonna get like nice and fudgy and jammy and it's actually gonna make the flavor profile kind of mellow out so you can just like dump it in a big old tub of mayonnaise. All right, so our garlic has been roasting. I took it and I popped it in the freezer for about 10 minutes just to cool it down, get it enough to work with. It becomes all cool and golden brown. Take it and you just squeeze and all that delicious roasted garlic flesh is going to come out. This garlic is super sweet. You can literally eat it right out of there. It's still garlic, I will tell you that. To make a paste, you're just gonna take the edge of your knife and flatten it out and you see how just like nice and jammy that becomes. Take all this garlic paste and we're just gonna add it to a small bowl. So there's lots of different condiments you can make for a burger. The easiest is probably a Thousand Island or a yum yum sauce as people call it. Sriracha, mayonnaise, and ketchup. Throw some pickles in there, do whatever you want with that. I really like going with this kind of different flavor profile. A nice spoonful of mayonnaise. You got about a quarter cup for one bulb of garlic. And then I'm gonna take two tablespoons of like a nice spicy brown mustard. We're gonna go about two tablespoons of that. And then just a little bit of black pepper. You're gonna mix this together and that is a beautiful midday treat that you can just suck down like a snack pack. I called mayonnaise savory pudding and a lot of people got mad about that. No, 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 I stand by that, it's delicious. All I'm gonna do is cut an onion in half and I'm gonna remove the skin, same way you would when you dice an onion. And then you're just gonna cut the onions very thin. You wanna fry these hot and fast when you cut them in flour and so you want them thin so you don't actually get a lot of that raw onion flavor in there. My favorite thing about doing a bed of these fried onions underneath the burger patty is that they're gonna catch all of the juices and then it's gonna act like this little ShamWow kind of effect, but it's a ShamWow that you can eat. I mean, technically you can eat a ShamWow, but I'd imagine it would just like soak up everything in your stomach like a giant matzo ball. Add that to flour with a hefty sprinkling of salt and pepper. And then now what you wanna do is massage the flour into the onions with your hands. So normally when you fry things right, you need some sort of coating, some sort of batter, some sort of wet for the flour to stick to, but onions have enough wet inside of them that the flour will actually just stick to it. And then you're just gonna drop them in in batches. 
Fry onions, fry. You don't want to overcrowd it too much. You just kind of cook these until they're done. If you flick flour in your oil and you see it spurt up a little bit, that means it's hot and that means it's going to be winter for another three months. I can see the onions have turned a nice golden brown color. They're like almost more batter than onion, but again, it gives you like this beautiful little straw mattress to put your burger on top of. Now there's several ways to cook a burger. There's a lot of people that believe a burger should only be grilled. And I do love a good backyard grilled cookout burger. The taste of live fire, especially charcoal is really great on it. But an advantage of cooking a burger in a pan is that you're getting full surface to meat contact. So with a cast iron skillet, you get a full seared. Why does it keep turning off? God, it feels great to be back in the mythical kitchen where everything works and everything is fucked. Let's fry an egg. We have some butter heating in a small saute pan. Fried egg over easy. All you gotta do is crack it right in there and then wait about eight or 10 minutes and then you have a perfect sunny side up egg. I don't always add an egg to my burger, but it is a really nice treat, especially like a homemade burger that like you really wanna be a little bit decadent about. You want your cast iron skillet to be incredibly hot. If you don't have a cast iron skillet, you can totally just use a normal frying pan as far as cook on the burger. I don't think burgers should be eaten anything less than like medium well. I know a lot of people like to eat their burgers like medium or medium rare. Nicole's a medium rare burger hardo, which for me is weird because then you're still getting like the texture of raw burger. Also, there's some food safety concerns, which is ironic because I just ate raw egg on my hands. All the bacteria on a steak is on the outside of it. So when you sear it, all that heat is killing the bacteria. But when you grind meat, you're literally taking surface bacteria and you're pushing it towards the center. I want a little bit of pink in there, but I'm not gonna stress about cook time or temperature. If you have any question on whether your burger is done, that means you have undercooked it. Just get a nice crust on there. If you're using a fatty enough meat, it's gonna retain juiciness. So we're just gonna take a little bit of canola oil just to kind of lube up our pan. And then I have a nice spatula that's gonna be great for like really getting the crusties off there. You notice I didn't mix anything into the meat. I don't like mixing things into a burger. To me, it should be pure beefy essence, and then all the toppings and the condiments are what add your flavors. I'm simply gonna take salt, get that all over one side, you want it to be nice salt heavy, and then a little bit of pepper. I said before in the past that I don't like searing pepper because it scorches, but like, I don't know, I kinda like it on a burger for some reason. I think this is where I'm learning I'm just a huge hypocrite. We're gonna take the burger patty. I like putting it on foil because then you can just slap it down and you can press into the foil to make sure that all of the surface area of the burger is getting touched. I'm gonna let that cook and just get a really nice hard sear for about four minutes or until it's just super, super crusty. And then season the other side with more salt and pepper. A lot of people talk about how with meat, it's a cardinal sin to flip it more than once. That's not true. You don't like lose juices just from the meat kind of inverting. If you flip it and it's not done, don't worry about reflipping it and going back. You're still gonna get a nice cook on it. But you see, we overshot the size of the burger to the bun, but now you can see the meat's already shrinking up and getting to be about this perfect size. I am using a Kaiser roll, which is not a typical burger bun. It's often used for like breakfast sandwiches. I really like it for a nice hefty homemade burger. Unlike a really squishy, say brioche or like a Martin's potato roll, a fast food burger bun, it holds up. The key to get the cheese melting is you're going to flip the burger and then right after you flip it, you put the cheese on the cooked piece of meat so it starts to melt. A lot of people will squirt water on the pan and then put a lid on top of it, and it helps melt the cheese, but then you're also getting watery cheese because the steam is actually condensing at the top of the lid and raining back down on it. It's called rave raining. When you go to a rave in like an abandoned warehouse and everyone's all dancing, they're jiving, it's like And then the sweat actually condenses at the top of the ceiling and starts raining down. Anyways, we're gonna take the burger and we're gonna flip it. Look at that beautiful seared crust. We're gonna add the cheese right on top of that. And then I got four pieces of bacon that I'm just going to lay on top. And then you're gonna put it right into your hair to add to the salt levels in your hair. You can already see that the cheese is starting to melt. What you really want is that little droop down the side, but you don't want it to be super melty. And the cheese that I'm using here is Kraft Deli Deluxe. Let me explain. American cheese is the best thing on a burger, but a lot of people hate Kraft American singles because it's pasteurized, processed American cheese. I have no problem with it typically, but Kraft Deli Deluxe is a legit American American cheese, so it's like a cross between American cheese and cheddar. You still get that beautiful meltiness of American cheese, but you're also getting the flavor punch of cheddar, which I absolutely love. It's nice and crusty. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it. So we have all this beautiful glistening beef fat. And you might be asking, Josh, what do I do with a lot of beautiful glistening beef fat? How do I use it to style my hair? I don't know, uh, but I know you can toast a bun in it. An untoasted bun in a burger is a cardinal sin for me. I know I normally like to avoid speaking in absolutes when it comes to food, but a toasted bun on a burger, one, gives it great texture. You get like a nice crunch to bite into. I'm thinking of like in and out here. There are beautiful bun toasting technicians that just wish they could translate that to their fries. And you know what? This egg's looking pretty good. Look at that. We got a nice fried egg. Look at it. Look at it. Look at the egg. Look at it.
The bun got some nice blackness just a little bit on the outside. The top bun is always about double the size of the bottom bun. That means as far as juice flow goes, gravity is pulling it towards the weakest side of the bun. So what I like to do is I build my burger and then flipply invert it. Flipply? Not a word at all. Not even close to a word. Josh, you're crazy. Let's just make a burger. I'm gonna take a large schlop of that roasted garlic mayonnaise that we made and I'm gonna put it right on the bottom bun. That is going to bleed into all these lovely crispy onion strings. The mayonnaise is actually actually going to act as like mortar and actually getting the onion strings to stick together. So you wanna build this a little bit high and then the onion strings, you see all the juice coming off of this burger, right? The onion strings are actually going to catch the juice from the burger. We're gonna take our fried egg and we're gonna go right on top of the bacon. Fried egg and bacon go together. So you want to take the flavor profiles that love each other, put them right next to each other. There's so much fat here, right? We got the egg yolk, we got the bacon, we got the cheese, we got the beef. So pickled jalapenos for freshness. Spiciness and acid both cut through fat. Also, this is going to act as your pickle. These are just pickled jalapenos straight from the jar. You could make your own, but like if it's good enough for ballpark nachos, it's good enough for me. Take one final schmear of mayonnaise and you're just gonna put that on the top bun. And then this is going to lovingly brown that burger. One last step that I totally forgot. How could I forget the ketchup? I'm all about ketchup on burgers. I know burger purists don't think ketchup should go on a burger. They say it's too sweet. George Motes, I'm directly talking about you. But a lot of my burger identity was formed when I was young, eating at the Carl's Juniors of the world. Now we have this fully made. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna wrap this in foil because fast food burgers to me are fantastic. One of the advantages they get is that they're wrapped and it can steam together. I'm gonna put it upside down to reverse the stress onto the top bun to reverse that juice flow. I'm gonna let it rest in foil upside down as I get in my power squat stance. My groins is sore. Anyone else groin is sore? The burger's been resting. You can feel its latent heat coming through the foil. So I'm gonna take it out and there is just your beautiful, sloppy, delicious burger of your dreams. I'm digging in. It's everything. The entire world is contained within this burger. It's absolutely perfect. We got such a hard cook on that burger, but you still, there's still a tiny bit of pink left, so we didn't cook it to death. The ketchup, all that garlic comes through, the bright little pops of jalapeno in there. And then again, all the juices are fully self-contained because of that onion straw bedding. It's my absolute perfect burger. And I hope you can take some burger cooking techniques away from this and apply it to your own home, even if you don't make this exact burger. But I'm telling you, you gotta make this exact burger. This is stupid good. Mm, burger eating technique with Josh, take one. What you gotta do, I have my elbows slightly flared out because if they're in, then the juice can drip down. But if your elbows are out, the juice is just gonna go right in your sinkhole. <laughs> That's not a euphemism. You arch your back. When you bite in, you use your mouth like a vacuum and you bite and you go to get all the juices. So here it goes. Oh, good. oh, I feel I'm going to be back. Thank you so much for watching Mythical Kitchen. If you have any burning burger questions, drop those in the comments or hit us up on Instagram at Mythical Kitchen. We got a new episode of our podcast, A Hot Dog's a Sandwich, every Wednesday. New cooking videos out every Tuesday and Thursday. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Uh, go, go eat some hamburgers, dude. It's, oh man. Yep. You can cook up your own feast while wearing the Mythical Kitchen apron, available now at mythical.com.